What's up, people? Coming at you from the truck for today's update video. Just literally walked out of the gym. Tis a rainy, gloomy Sunday. So the rest of the day is gonna consist of absolutely nothing, um, which I'm happy with because I am sore as hell. Yesterday, myself and my good friend, my client, Aaron, had a really solid leg workout, did some heavy deadlifts, some heavy squats, and all the other fun stuff that comes with that workout. So my body is, is feeling it today. Basically everything from my traps, kind of like the base of my neck down to the base of my hamstrings is sore, but that, uh, that didn't let us you know, not get a good workout in today, but I am looking forward to tomorrow's rest day. And like I said, basically doing nothing the rest of today. So this week has been pretty good um, from training, nutrition, everything's been pretty on point. The only thing that I could say I lacked in the quality department is sleep. Uh, for some reason, the dog has been not sleeping very well, poor guy. I don't know if it's because of the temperature change and like, like some nights we have the fan on and then it's like freezing cold, but then like this past week it was weird because like the one day it was like 30 degrees, so then you needed the air conditioning on and it was just, just a poor setup all around. So he was tossing and turning and he's on the bed, off the bed, which then wakes me up. And uh, yeah, just, just a little, little crappy. And um, I've been in this, uh, a little bit of a, a routine of training on one of my rest days, usually just like arms or something like that. And this past week was not good. The week before that was okay, but this past week, I uh, I just was not not wanting to do that. <laughs> um, so the way my training structured this week, I had Friday as a rest day. So I trained, I think, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I should have took the rest day Friday um, in preparation for legs yesterday and, and today's back workout, but I didn't, uh, and that was to my detriment. Uh, I, I woke up early because I had a client early on Monday morning and Friday mornings. I have a client at uh, 5.45 and she's till 6.30. So on Saturday, or no, on Friday, I was, I was like, okay, you know, I think I'll just go to the gym. Why not? So I got up and I couldn't, like I couldn't eat what I would normally eat before a workout because it was so early. I didn't give myself enough time and that would have had me getting up at probably like quarter to five, which is just, that's early. <laughs> that's really early. Um, so what I did was I just had, I think like a bagel or something like that in the morning and then trained her. I drank my pre-workout, which did absolutely nothing. And then came to the gym and did arms and like 15, 10 minutes into the workout, I was like, man, I just don't want to be here. I couldn't get a pump, I was tired, I just wasn't in the right mindset, was just run down basically from, from the hard training sessions leading up to, to the Friday. So that kind of set the tone for the rest of the day basically. I was fatigued, I was exhausted, and the the biggest thing I want you guys to take away from, from this video is listening to your body and, and knowing when to give it the rest that it needs. As much as you know, we, we all love training and we all would love to be able to go to the gym every single day, for, for many of us that's not feasible. Um, some people can, I follow guys on Instagram that train every single day and then they might train 20 days straight before they take an actual rest day and they're fine and that works for them. But if you're like me and after three or four hard sessions you need a day of, of rest, then, then take that and you know, I'm, I'm kicking myself for not doing that. Thankfully, it was just like an arm day. So it's, you know, it's not overly physically taxing as say like a leg day or, or a full upper body day, for example, but I was noticeably fatigued um, trying to push my body that much farther than it wanted to go. So yeah, I think the days of maybe cramming in that extra workout are, are behind me. I don't think I should, uh, should probably do that. I think I should give my body the rest it needs because at the end of the day, you need that rest and recovery to grow and build new muscle and get results, right? So when you're pushing your body farther than maybe it wants to go or farther than your recovery capabilities, it's it's probably not gonna yield you really any more benefits. So that's something that I wanted to touch on in this video. But anyways, let's get into this week's training. So some footage from Push is probably gonna start playing right now. Uh, did the, the 120s, so as you guys no, if you've been following these, uh, I had uh, some pec issues going on, so I took like two weeks off from doing any chest, and thankfully it's it's gone. Everything feels good now. So last week, 
Uh, I went to flat dumbbell press as kind of like my big compound movement for, for push. And I got the 120s up for two sets of eight and then a back off set of, I think, 70s for 15 or whatever it was. Doesn't matter. So this week, I was like, okay, 120s, we're getting 10. Whether it's one set of 10 or two sets of 10, I don't know, but we're getting 10 reps. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened, which I'm really happy with. I So when I record on my phone, which for you guys wondering, that's all I use. I don't have a very fancy camera. I use my iPhone 8 Plus and it works just fine. I'm clear, you guys can hear me, that's what we need. So when I record, the only issue is that I can't listen to music when the phone is recording. So. Sometimes in those big heavy sets, you need some tunes blast. And that's why when I do legs, you guys might notice I have like little earbuds in my ear. That's because I bug Aaron for his earbuds <laughs> so I can record on my phone. He got his music playing in my ear and everything works out. But when I'm by myself, I don't have that luxury. So I did the first set and I was like, okay, I'm gonna put music in just, just so I'm in the zone. And uh, I got 10 reps, but I didn't get it recorded. So I was like, man, that's a, that's a good set. That's a milestone for myself. I don't, I don't want that recorded I'm like ah shit so now I'm like okay I got to do my second set ideally get 10 but I don't got music so set up the camera headphones on the ground don't got them grab the weights here we go sure enough we got 10 it was a hard 10 the first set was much smoother but it was a hard 10 but it was still 10 so now I don't know what I'm gonna do because the, the dumbbells only go up to 120 here, and I don't know if I can rig up anything heavier by like banding up some plates. I've seen some guys do that. I don't know if I wanna go through that hassle or just switch to, to barbell again, but we'll see. We'll worry about that next week when the time comes. Um, then we followed up with uh, Incline Smith, which has been fun. Really, really digging that. So one heavy set or two heavy sets, I don't remember, and then a back off set to really fry the chest up. Big fan of that, and then the cuffed uh, chest flies which you guys know I'm a, I'm a huge fan of as well. And then uh, the typical shoulder stuff, lots of lateral raises, uh, some overhead, and then some tricep work to finish. Uh, I've been doing this uh, machine tricep extension. I think I got a video of it. Um, and normally it's like, like you have your hand grips here and, and then you extend down and, and that's how it's set up. But I don't feel it really all that much when I do it how it's like supposed to be done. Um, like the backrest is back here and then you have your hands and it just doesn't, doesn't work well for me. So I was playing around with it and I found that if I lean forward, grab it higher than where the actual hand rest is, so I'm actually grabbing like the bar of the machine, I get a really good contraction in my tricep doing that. So if you guys have this machine, um, try and you don't feel it, try doing it how I've been doing it because it's good. Once you get it, it's really good. And you can do, uh, I find whether I do one at a time and really focus on that isolation, or if I do both, as long as I do it in that manner, it feels really good. So I'm going to keep that in the, the rotation for the next little while because it's good. It's good isolation for the tricep. And then, uh, what else I do? I think I did skull crushers maybe, and then rope. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably planned. Um, but anyway, so then yesterday we went to uh, do some legs. And like I said, it was a very heavy taxing day. Last week, uh, deadlifts, back to conventional, not doing sumo anymore, back to conventional, and a little bit higher rep, shooting for sets of five now instead of heavy uh, twos and threes, trying to get a little bit more of that hypertroph hypertrophic stimulus versus just like hulking the weight up for two reps, trying to do a little bit more, you know, get a little bit more stimulus from the deadlift, trying to do a little bit more control on the eccentric and just getting, getting more basically stimulus for, for everything behind you. Deadlifts from, like I said, I'm sore from my traps down to my lower back, to my glutes, to my hamstrings, all sore and all from deadlifts. So if, if you don't got deadlifts in your program in some form or another, whether it's dumbbell or barbell or sumo or conventional or deficit or hex bar or whatever, I think some kind of deadlift, as long as you can do it pain-free with good form, should be in there somehow because it's, it's not called the king of exercises for no reason. Um, so anyways, we went to 465 pounds, so that was a 10 pound jump from last week, and it was, they were working sets, I'm not gonna lie. Those were very, very heavy sets, um, and I used uh, a pair of straps from the gym here. 
from Omega that they have because mine kept slipping last week and it really made me angry. <laughs> so I, I had the different straps and that took a little bit of getting used to, but uh, thankfully they, they held on without causing my hands to slip. And uh, they, were, they were heavy sets. I usually do three sets, but I capped it at two just because I think uh, that third set, the risk to reward might have been very, very close to one another. So I stuck with just the two sets of five at 465 pounds. My, my goal is 500 for five at some point. Whether that's this year or not, I don't know because that's still another 35 pounds basically. Um, for a single 35 pounds, like I could hit 500 for a single, no problem, but to actually get five reps that don't cause my spine to explode <laughs> would uh, would be a challenge. So that's my that's my goal in my head, but I'm not overly concerned with hitting it before I start prep in the new year um, because I know that's that's a lofty weight for for someone my size and and for where my strength and skill level is at with the deadlift. Um, I'm not in no rush to hit it, but uh, that's something that that I'm thinking about. Then we did squats, uh, same setup, one set of eight to 10, and then one set up of one set of five. Um, did 320 for the set of 10, which felt good, and then 380 for the set of five, which was a fight again. Um, I think it was two or three weeks ago now, I fudged up the math when I was putting the plates on the bar, and I think it was 380, and three reps almost buried me. So the fact that I got five, you know, decently clean, there might've been six in there. Um, I'm pretty happy with so yeah things are good on that front and then uh, I've been switching it up a little bit with the following exercises after those two so we did uh, a seated hamstring curl in the machine I was never a big fan of the machine here um, but that's because I can never set it up right I don't know if I just didn't take the time to set it up right or if I just do it once and I'm like ah this is stupid doesn't feel good but I've actually taken the time to feel it out and it's actually pretty good so uh, did that instead of the glute ham raise um, just because my back was a little fatigued um, from the deadlifts and the squats so I wanted to do something for my hamstrings that didn't require any uh, load on my lower back so that's when the, the machine curl came in handy um, and then we did uh, leg extensions with uh, four sets like usual and then instead of doing the walking lunges with the sissy squats we did a, a Bulgarian split with the sissy squats and uh, reason being was that my uh, my body was just <laughs> pretty fatigued from everything that was coming on uh, with the the squats and the one or the squats and the deadlifts and then like I mentioned earlier the the Friday workout that you know kind of beat me up a little more um, than I would want it to and uh, I just wasn't wasn't doing walking lunges <laughs> yesterday wasn't doing it so we did the split squat which still got my quads pretty good and then went over to the leg press to finish it off. So that was uh, that was a good workout yesterday. Like I said, I'm feeling it today. Uh, I anticipate probably around two or three o'clock, I will fall asleep on the couch this afternoon. Um, but like I said, it's a rainy day, so no problem. We got no obligations today. It's fine. Um, yeah. Then uh, today, my buddy Aaron again and my client Kyle came up. We had a good back workout, which we just finished up. And uh, it was good, did a little posing with the boys after, just to play around with that. And yeah, things are good. Things are very busy as far as coaching athletes is concerned. Uh, I don't know what what's the deal, but things are blowing up, which is good. I think uh, I think just the way I've been, you know, kind of marketing myself on Instagram and what I've been posting and the content that I've been putting out there, and then people like spreading the words, you know, saying that I've helped them get results and get them to where they want to go is paying off which is super cool um, when I first moved here I was you know a little bit concerned that like I basically am starting over when I lived back home I'd been full-time trainer since you know I was like 21 I think is when I got uh, hired on and from 21 to like 25 I was full-time I was very well known in Belleville as being like someone who can you know, give you good workouts, get you results, and, and educate you, and fun to be around. Like, I had a very good reputation, and uh, moving to a different city was kind of like, man, you know, I'm, I'm kind of leaving that behind, and now I gotta start all over. But uh, it's funny how 
when you put the effort in that it doesn't take long for that to build up. Um, with the gym I go to now, Omega Fit Club, um, the owner and I hit it off really well and he's been very helpful with you know, sharing my stuff on Instagram when I tag them and, and people at the gym quickly got to know me. Like I'm very much open to talking to people and I'm not hesitant at all to go up to somebody and be like, hey, try this or blah, blah, blah. And people appreciate that and it's paid off, right? I'm, I'm busier now with coaching than I was back home in Belleville. So it's it's super cool to see like those efforts, you know, pay off. I'm, I'm very happy with that. And like little things like this stuff, right? Like, like shirts, hoodies, um, like sharing people's things. And, and like I said, giving advice, like it just all comes together and, and is building, you know, this brand that is Lira Rollins Fitness, right? It's not just me as a person now, it's a brand that is a coach, is a personal trainer, gives people advice, helps people, gives people information, like that's what I want it to be. And I wanna, I wanna be somebody that people know that they can go to for help and for, for information and all that good stuff. So it's it's been super cool seeing it all grow and come together. So yeah, th things are good guys. I'm very, I'm very happy. I'm excited to prep next year because there's a lot of people um, looking forward to to seeing me prep that haven't seen me prep before and what all goes into it and it gives them some context to what it takes to get to the, st the stage what's involved in it and, and how it's all done so I'm super excited to document that and and you know provide people with that information so it's gonna be cool um, but yeah I'm gonna go home and eat and then go to sleep <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you guys are watching this, you want a hoodie or a t-shirt. I got a t-shirt on under here, right there. Um, let me know. I can get them uh, pretty much any color you want. Black, gray, navy, maroon, bright red, white, pink. I can get them all. So let me know and I will hook you up. Not a problem. So thanks again, guys, for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe. We're almost at 800 subs. I don't know where all the subscribers are coming from, but things have been steadily climbing the last little while. It's been pretty cool to watch. So if you guys are new to this channel, please subscribe, like the video, spread the love, and I'll see y'all in the next one.